licensed clinical social worker. She has her own private practice where she specializes in trauma. Elizabeth will be speaking from her manual, speaking to inform trauma is a great equalizer. Welcome to the Transcript of the Medical. Thank you. Morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty <coughs> together again. I use this nursery rhyme just as in a little analogy to help you understand what it is like for someone before their trauma, Humpty sitting on the wall, and then Humpty falling off the wall post-trauma. So when I saw those words, trauma is a great equalizer, it resonated with me for so many reasons. And one of them being is because trauma doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care about your race, your gender, or your socioeconomic status. Take a look around this room right now. Take a look at your neighbor. Can you tell who has been a victim or a witness of some traumatic event? The thing with Humpty is that you will see that he has these physical cracks in his shell. So that is easy for a lot of people to accept that this person went through some kind of trauma. But what we don't take into account is that some people actually have invisible wounds to their mind. And these traumatic events can be something as a divorce, a loss of a loved one, natural disasters, cheating, or even being a survivor of sexual assault. So by the time that these clients come in to me, they are emotionally and physically exhausted. And one of the things that I do is that I immediately start to take the emotion out of the trauma. And I do this by teaching them how the brain reacts to stressful situations. And I'm going to show you today, and I'm going to give you just a brief overview of how I do that, and I'm going to use what's known as the hand model that was used by Dr. Dan Siegel. And for those of you that don't know him, he is the guru in mindfulness and interpersonal neurobiology. And so this is what we call the rest here, the reptilian brain. And the reptilian brain has been around for millions and millions of years. And what this does is it's a survival basic mechanism and it's to keep you alive. It's doing it right now. It's automatic. You're breathing. It regulates your temperature. It keeps your heart beating. This is what we call the mammalian brain. It's been around, I think, approximately 200 million years. And this is your limbic system. And I'm going to come back to that in just a second. And this is what we call the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex, right here. And this is what makes us human. This is our conscious brain. This is where we do our rational, logical, linear thinking, and yes, illogical thinking. This is your Olympic system, and as I said, the mammalian brain, which is what we also refer to as the emotional part of the brain. And in the limbic system, we have this little thing called the amygdala, but it's very powerful because this is where you initiate the fight, flight, or freeze. And we call this the alarm system or the watchtower. So when it perceives that you are in danger, it sends off this alarm. And when it does this, Dr. Dan Siegel refers to this as flipping your lid. Remember, this is your prefrontal cortex. This is going offline because now it's perceiving danger. It then starts to talk to the reptilian part of your brain. And it goes, okay, we're in danger here. You've got to do something. And this is your fight or flight. If the brain cannot fight, or flee, it will go into what's known as a freeze or collapse. You'll know when you're in fight or flee, 
because you'll feel your heart increasing, your breathing increasing, and some people describe it as being jacked up. It's like putting your foot on the gas pedal and going from zero to 60 in a nanosecond. So when it can't fight and it can't flee, it goes into what is called the freeze or the collapse. Again, that's like putting the brakes, slamming down on the brakes really hard. And you will feel like the blood is being drained out of your body. Again, you are no longer online. But what is different about this freeze and collapse complex is that not only is this going offline, it is shutting down a bunch of other areas to keep you alive, including the brochia area, which is responsible for your speech. And this is especially common in women and women of sexual assault, because they will often say to you, I couldn't scream. I tried, but I couldn't. And sometimes they're told, why didn't you run? Because they couldn't have access to it. It has gone offline. And when your brain eventually perceives that the danger has disappeared, the prefrontal cortex is now coming back online. And we've all been there. And we've all gone, oh my god, what did I do? I should have done this, I could have done this. And this is where this illogical thinking then starts to come into play, and it starts to go over and over and over again. And by the time I see these clients, they are now in this toxic cycle. But what is great about this is that once they understand the function of the brain, they are then able to redirect their attention to different parts of the brain so they can function differently. And trauma is a great equalizer, but I also believe that healing is a great equalizer. And with knowledge comes power. And I often wonder if all the king's men and all the king's horses understood how the mind and body processes trauma, could they have put Humpty back together again? Thank you.